Or if you turn to Isaiah chapter 7. Isaiah chapter 7, we'll start in verse 9. And the head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is Ramallah's son. If you will not believe, surely you shall not be established. Then in verse 10 it says, Moreover, Jehovah spake again unto Ahaz, saying, Ask thee a sign of Jehovah thy God. Ask it either in the depth or in the height above. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, neither will I tempt Jehovah. And he said, Hear ye now, O house of David, is it a small thing for you to weary men? But will you weary my God also? And he said, Hear ye now, O house of David, is it a small thing for you to weary men? But will you weary my God also? Therefore, Jehovah himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Butter and honey shall he eat, that he may know to refuse the evil and to choose the good. For before the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land that thou borest shall be forsaken of both her kings. Jehovah shall bring upon thee and upon thy people and upon thy father's house days that have not come from the day that Ephraim departed from Judah, even the king of Israel. And it shall come to pass in that day that Jehovah shall hiss for the fly that is in the uttermost part of the rivers of Egypt, and for the bee that is in the land of Assyria. And they shall come and shall rest all of them in the desolate valleys and in the holes of the rocks, and upon all thorns and upon all bushes. In the same day shall the Lord shave with a razor that is hired, namely by them beyond the river, by the king of Assyria, the head and the hair of the feet. And it shall also consume the beard. And it shall come to pass in that day, that a man shall nourish a young cow and two sheep, and it shall come to pass for the abundance of milk that they shall give. He shall eat butter, for butter and honey shall everyone eat that is left in the land. And it shall come to pass in that day that every place shall be where there were a thousand vines, and at a thousand silverlings it shall be for briars and thorns. With arrows and with bows shall men come thither, because of all the land shall become briars and thorns. And on all hills that shall be digged with the mattock, there shall not come thither for fear, uh, thither the fear of briars and, th- briars and thorns, but it shall be for the sending forth of oxen and for the treading of lesser cattle. All right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Yeshua, Jehovah, we just come to you this afternoon, Yeshua, and I pray you bless this message. I pray you use it for your glory and your kingdom and your power that shall come. And I pray you encourage the saints in thee as we wait for your kingdom, Yah. And for that day, Jehovah, that we were restored back to the land, back to the land of promise given by the oath and affirmation in the covenant, Yeshua. And I pray in that precious name, so be it. So here in Isaiah chapter 7, we read this, this verse, these verses here a couple of weeks ago in the beginning of July. We, we began at the end of uh, Isaiah 7 verse 9. It says, if you will not believe, Surely ye shall not be established. This was the establishment of the covenant. And as I've been preaching, was built upon the foundation of repentance from dead works and a faith towards God. If they don't, if Israel didn't believe and they didn't, they kept going or falling away from God and coming back. They never got established until a point in time where their kingdom was was taken away from them. We keep reading. The the original covenant was established upon, again, the same foundation repentance and a faith towards Christ because Abraham received Christ in the figure when he offered up Isaac, his son. The promises given to Abraham was that he would be a nation or a kingdom and that his kingdom would be established upon the promised land and his seed after him would be in the covenant and God would protect them all their days and their seed would be in multitude as the stars of heaven and as the sand of the sea. This was given to Abraham through an oath in the hand of the mediator and that mediator was Christ. This covenant given to Abraham was a foreshadow of the new covenant which came when the fullness of times came and the grace that the prophets inquired of and searched diligently should come when Christ came full of grace and truth. 
In Isaiah chapter 7, verse 10, it says, Moreover, Jehovah spake again unto Ahaz, saying, Ask thee a sign of Jehovah, thy God. Ask it either in the depth or in the height above. What was the sign? In verse 12, Ahaz says he, he's not going to ask. He doesn't want to tempt Jehovah. And then in verse 13, it says, And he said, Hear now, O house of David, is it a small thing for you to weary men, but will you weary my God also? Verse 14, and here's the sign. Therefore, Jehovah himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, meaning God with us. God came in the flesh. Jehovah came in the flesh. God himself was born of the Virgin Mary. A virgin, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Butter and honey shall he eat that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. This again, Christ was without sin. He refused the evil and he chose the good. He was our example. He was, the, he, he, he was our forerunner who forthwith went within the veil to make a way for us back into the kingdom, back into paradise, back into his, the kingdom of heaven. That was the sign given. Jehovah himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, meaning God with us. Butter and honey shall he eat that he may know, their, that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land that thou borest, Isaiah speaking to the people of his day, Israel to his day, the land that thou borest shall be forsaken of both her kings. When Christ came, before Christ came, Israel was no longer a nation. The Romans had occupied the land of Israel, the promised land. Both their, both the the upper kingdom, Israel, and, and the lower kingdom, Judah, were, were taken away as a, as a kingdom. They, didn't have a, they, didn't, they were ruled by a foreign government. They were ruled by the Romans. So that prophecy was fulfilled. And then you have all, all the prophecies, verses 17 through, through the end of the, Isaiah chapter 7. And it says, Jehovah shall bring upon thee and upon thy people and upon thy fathers' his house days that... that have not come from the day that Ephraim departed from Judah, even the king of Assyria. The last tragedy that happened to the children of Israel where the ten northern tribes were taken captive by the king of Assyria. So another tragedy came when the, when the Babylonians came and they took away the tribes of Judah and Benjamin and, and the remaining Levites that were in the land. The sign was given. Jehovah gave the sign. Turn to Isaiah 7.25. Isaiah 7.25 says, And it, and on all hills that shall be digged with mattock, with a mat with the mattock, there shall not come thither for fear of briars and thorns, but it shall be for the sending forth of oxen and for the treading of lesser cattle. So the land would be desolate. It would be desolate until he that cometh in the name of Jehovah, until they say, "Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the whole, in the name of Jehovah," and that day was fulfilled when Christ came, but they still rejected him. And what did Yeshua say? He says, "Your house is left to you desolate, because they knew not the day of their visitation." Why was the promised land given to Jacob, to Jacob through Abraham and uh, Isaac? Why, why, was, why was it forsaken of both their kings? Because they did not keep their end of the covenant. They rebelled against his laws and his commandments. In Isaiah 7, 9, it says, If ye will not believe, surely ye shall not be established. Last Sabbath we read in 2 Timothy chapter 2. Let's go back there, 2 Timothy chapter 2. We'll look at verse 19. It says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. Jehovah knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. There are two parts to this foundation that the Apostle Paul lays down that stands sure, stands established forever. 
Because it's an established covenant. The O angel I on from the foundation of the world. Before the foundation of the world, it's the gospel, the everlasting gospel. The one sacrifice for all time. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stand assured having this seal. The first part is Jehovah knoweth them that are his. And we'll get into that in a little bit. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. His people that refuse, that were supposed to refuse the evil and choose the good, unless they kept that part of it, they were not established. And Isaiah 7.22, For butter and honey, for butter and honey shall everyone eat that is left in the land. Everyone that's left shall eat the butter and honey. It's, it's, a, it's a sign of or refusing the evil and choosing the good. Turn to, turn to Psalm chapter 45. Here's another prophecy. Remember the sign that was given in Isaiah 7. Verse 14, Therefore Jehovah himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Butter and honey shall he eat, that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. In Psalm chapter 45, we'll start in verse 1. Psalm 45, Verse, verse 1 says, My heart is indicting a good manner. I speak of the, of the things which I had made, touching the king. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Thou art fairer than the children of men. Grace is poured into thy lips. Therefore God hath blessed thee forever. Gird thy sword upon thy thigh, O most mighty, with thy, the, thy glory and thy majesty. And in thy majesty ride pro- prosperously, because of truth and meekness and righteousness, in thy right hand shall teach thee terrible things. Thine arrows are sharp in the heart of the king's enemies, whereby the people fall under thee. Listen to verse 6. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. He's a Yeshua is the king, and his he's called, and this this prophecy here. King David writes, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Turn to Isaiah 45. Actually, we'll skip that verse. In Isaiah 45, verse 7. We continue. Speaking of Christ, it's the prophecy of Christ. King David writes prophetically, he says, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore, God, thy God hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. This verse goes along with Isaiah chapter 7. Verses 14, and four, verses 14 and 15. Therefore, Jehovah himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, meaning God with us. God himself is going to come. Born of the Virgin Mary, like 2,000 years ago when he was born of the Virgin Mary, he, he was proclaimed the king of Israel. All right, he came unto his own, but his own received him not. But as to as to many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. The second part to this prophecy in Isaiah chapter seven was verse fifteen: Butter and honey shall he eat, that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. In Psalm forty-five, verses six and seven, it says, "Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever." The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou lovest righteousness and hated wickedness and hatest wickedness. Therefore, God, thy God hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. He chooses the he refuses the evil 
and chooses the good. He loveth righteousness and hateth wickedness. Just like 2 Timothy chapter 2.19 says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. Jehovah knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Christ our King will one day return and bring us back into the promised land. The promised land was given to the promised seed. Turn to Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. Where it speaks of Abraham. Galatians chapter 3. And we'll start in in verse 16. It says, Now to Abraham and to his seed were the promises made. He saith not at... He saith not unto seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed which is Christ. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before God in Christ, the law which was 430 years after, cannot disannul, that it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise. But God gave, gave it to Abraham by promise. And the same promise of the land of the promised land called the inheritance is given to his children, not as to seeds, he says in verse 16, as of many, but as one, one seed. One seed will inherit all the promises and the oath that was affirmed by Christ himself, the mediator of the covenant. It's given to his seed. And this seed is, is, is established in those where it says in 2 Timothy chapter chapter 2, verse 19, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. Jehovah knoweth them that are His. He knoweth His seed. He knoweth who His children are. He knoweth who His sheep, who his sheep are. And... Let, let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. The butter and honey. Isaiah chapter 7. And we'll look at verse 22. We'll look at the verse 22. It says, And it shall come to pass, for the abundance of milk that they shall give, he shall eat butter For butter and honey shall everyone eat that is left in the land, the remnant. The promises is given to Abraham's seed and to the remnant of his seed. So Galatians 3.16 speaks of to Abraham's seed, the promise. Turn to Gospel of John chapter 10. John chapter 10. We'll start in verse 15. It says, As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. And they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. He gathers together in one his elect. Verse 17 Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, and that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. There was a division, therefore, again among the Jews for for these sayings. And these people, who call themselves Jews, but are not, are of the synagogue of Satan, Verse 20, it says, And many of them said, He hath he had, he had the devil and is mad. Why hear ye him? Others said, These are not the words of him that hath the devil. Can the devil open the eyes of the blind? So Christ says, All the sheep I have that are not of this fold. These, the ones he's talking to are his, true, are his true sheep, are those who departed from iniquity, and they love righteousness. They've laid the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards Christ. 
in the Gospel of John, if we keep reading, it says in verse 22, and it was at Jerusalem, the and it and it was at Jerusalem the feast of dedication, and it was and it was winter. And Yeshua walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Verse 25, Yeshua answered them, I told you, and ye believe not the words, the works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep. He told these Jews, you are not of my sheep, you are not my people. They're imposters, they're Edomites. They're not of the seed of Abraham where the promises were made. To, to Abraham and to his seed was the promises made. And what was the covenant that was given to Abraham? Walk before me, Abraham, and be ye blameless. Depart from iniquity. Keep my laws and my commandments. This was 400 some years before Moses. What laws is Abraham keeping? He's keeping the eternal law. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest iniquity. God, even thy God, He came. His name was Christ, Yeshua, Emmanuel, meaning God with us. God Himself gave a sign, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call His name Emmanuel. Here Yeshua was telling these Jews, which at that, that time, they, 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 were 90, they, they were corrupted. And even today, 97% of those that call themselves Jews, I just, I just heard they're not even physically of the seed of the tribe of Judah. But Yeshua says here in John chapter 10, He says in verse 26, But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave, me, which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my hand. Because he is a king, and he protects his own sheep. He protects his own people. He says in verse 30, I and my Father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone them. Yeshua answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which one of these works do you stone me? They're full of unbelief and hatred and murder, murder against Christ. Yeshua came for His own. 2 Timothy 2.19 Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, Jehovah knoweth them that are His. Yeshua knows them that are His. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. These Jews failed in both, both requirements. They, they're not on the foundation of God. They cannot be saved. They're not of His seed. And Yeshua says, You're of your father the devil. And they never departed from iniquity. Yeshua called them white-walled sepulchers. He called them serpents. He called them the children of the devil. Turn to Isaiah chapter 8. We were in this verse. We read these verses last Sabbath. Isaiah chapter 8. And we'll start in verse 16. When the gospel is preached, and the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit works when the Word of God goes out. What? How do you enter the covenant? How do you establish the covenant? How, how do you become established in the kingdom of God? How do you become an heir of the promises and to inherit the kingdom that shall come? By this, you bind up the testimony, it says. Bind up the testimony. Seal the law among my disciples. You seal it. You affirm it. When you take the cup, which symbolizes His blood, and you drink of the fruit of the vine, 
you seal to God that God is true. Let every man be a liar, but God, God is true and every man is a liar. You seal, you bind up the testimony and you seal the law among my disciples, Jehovah says. In verse 17 it says, And I will wait upon Jehovah that hideth his face from the house of J Jacob, and I will look for him. Behold, I and the children whom Jehovah hath given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from Jehovah Tzaboeth, which dwelleth in Mount Zion. The sign shall be given, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Here in Isaiah chapter 8, just like Yeshua says, all that the Father hath given me, I lose none. He keeps his sheep. He's able to keep his sheep. In verse 18 of Isaiah, in verse 16 of Isaiah 8, it says, Bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. And it says, I will wait upon Jehovah that hideth his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. They were looking for Christ. Some of the true saints were looking for Christ. In, when the, in the days that he, when, when, when he came 2,000 years ago, they were the first disciples of Christ. They knew that this was indeed Christ. In verse 18 it says, Behold, I and the children whom Jehovah hath given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel, from Jehovah to both which dwelt in Mount Zion. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep, and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead. And in verse 20, it says, To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. They're not of Christ. They're not of Him. Verse 21, it says, And they shall pass through it, hardly be stead with, and hungry. And it shall come to pass that when they shall be hungry, and they shall, and shall, they shall fret themselves, and curse their king and their God, and look upward. And they shall look unto the earth, and behold trouble and darkness, dimness of anguish, and they shall be driven to darkness. Those that reject him, they're driven to darkness, they lose their kingdom, and they're separated from, from the promises of God. They're not, they, will, they, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. Turn to... When it says in Isaiah chapter 17, it says, And I will wait upon Jehovah that hide his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. Turn to Psalm chapter 37. It says in verse 21, And, the, and they shall pass through it, hardly be said and hungry, and shall come to pass, that when they shall be hungry, they, sh they shall fret themselves, and curse their king and their God, and look upward. What does Psalm 37 verse 1 begin with? Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as a green herb. Trust in Jehovah and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in Jehovah, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto Jehovah, Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And it shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in Jehovah, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger, and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon Jehovah... They shall inherit the earth for yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plotteth against the just, and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. Jehovah shall laugh at him, for he seeth his day coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword, and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy. And the slay such as a be of upright conversation. Their sword shall enter into their own heart, and their bow shall be broken. A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. 
For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but Jehovah upholdeth the righteous. Jehovah knoweth the days of the upright, and then and their inheritance shall be forever. And they shall not be ashamed in the evil time. And in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of Jehovah shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume into smoke, and they shall vanish away. The wicked, wicked borroweth, and payeth not again. But the righteous showeth mercy and giveth. For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth. And they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. And we'll, we'll stop right there. But again, in verse 7 of Psalm 37. Rest in Jehovah and wait patiently for him. Fret not, fret not thyself because of him who, who prospereth in his way. Because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. The kingdom of God right now, we're waiting for Christ to return and for the kingdom of God to be established in the earth. And all of Psalm 37, if you read it, you understand. Don't fret yourself and don't worry of the things happening in this world. All of these wicked people of this earth are going to be soon cut off. Wait patiently for Him. Turn to Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30, and we'll start in verse 14. And he shall break it as the breaking of the potter's vessel that is broken in pieces, he shall not spare so that there shall not be found in the bursting of it assured to take fire from the earth or to take water withal out of the pit. For thus saith Adonai Jehovah, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall ye be saved. That means in repenting. In returning and rest shall ye be saved. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength, and ye would not. But ye said, No, for we flee upon horses. Therefore shall ye flee... And we will ride upon the swift. Therefore shall they that pursue you be swift. One thousand shall flee at the rebuke of one. And at the rebuke of five shall ye flee. Till ye be left as a beacon upon the top of the mountain. As an ensign upon, upon an hill. And then it says in verse 18. And therefore will Jehovah wait. That he may be gracious unto you. Therefore will he be exalted. That he may have mercy upon you. For Jehovah is a God of judgment. Blessed are all they that wait for Him. For the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem. Thou shalt weep no more. He will be very gracious unto thee. At the voice of thy cry, when he shall hear it, he will answer thee. And though Jehovah give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner any more. But thine eyes shall see thy teachers, and thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk ye in it, when ye turn to the right hand and when ye turn to the left. And then he goes on in, in the rest of the verses in Isaiah chapter 30. Turn to Isaiah chapter 49. Isaiah chapter 49. It says in verse 18, Lift up thine eyes round about, and behold, all these gather themselves together and come to thee. As I live, saith Jehovah, thou shalt surely clothe thee with them all as with an ornament, and bind them on thee as a bride doeth. For thy waste in thy desolate places and the land of thy destruction shall even now be too narrow by reason of the inhabitants and they that swallowed thee up shall be far away. Remember we began in Isaiah chapter 7 and we began and we read the verse in verse 16. It says, For before the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good, 
The land that thou bore shall be forsaken of both her kings. It becomes a land of briars and thorns, a land for the oxen, for the treading of the lesser oxen. These are the promises given to his seed, his people, those that have laid the foundation of repentance from dead works and a faith towards God, those where the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, Jehovah knoweth them that are his, and let him that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. All of these chapters and, and verses we've read are talking about his remnant, his seed. And here in Isaiah chapter 49, he's saying, Lift up thine eyes round about, and behold, all these that gather themselves together and come to thee. Who are these people? It's his, his true people, the true Israel of God. In verse 20, it says, The children which thou shalt have after thou hast lost the other. Right? The other sheep was lost. The other people were lost because they broke the covenant. Shall say again in thine ears, the place is too straight for me, or it's too, it's too little for me. Give, give place to me that I may dwell. Then shalt thou say in thine heart, Who hath begotten me thee, seeing I have lost my children, and am desolate, a captive, a captive, and removing to and fro? And who hath brought up these? Behold, I was left alone. These, where had they been? Thus saith Adonai Jehovah, Behold, I will lift up mine hand to the Gentiles, and set up my standard to the people, and they shall bring thy sons in their arms, and thy daughters shall be carried upon their shoulders, and kings shall be thy nursing fathers, and their queens thy nursing mothers. They shall bow down to thee with their face toward the earth, and lick up the dust of thy feet, and thou shalt know that I am Jehovah, for they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. We're waiting for Christ. Second return. Turn to First Thessalonians chapter one. Here's an example in the New Testament where we're waiting for Christ. First Thessalonians. Chapter one. And we'll start in verse 9. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had them unto you, and how, and how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Yeshua, which delivered us from the wrath to come. You go read Psalm 37. God's going to do away with the wicked. All that will be remaining is the righteous seed that chooses to good, do good and hateth the, the iniquity, to depart from iniquity. When will this happen? It's going to happen soon. We're, at the, we're in the last days. And one of the, my favorite verses is at the end of the book of Romans. Turn to the book of Romans, chapter 16. And we'll start in verse 17. It says, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause the visions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. All right? They preach, they preach another gospel. If they preach e easy believism, if they, if they preach unto you any other doctrine but the doctrine of Christ, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, the foundation of repentance from dead works and a faith faith towards God, he says, mark them, separate yourselves from them because they're trying to mix the seed within God's holy seed. Verse 18, For they that are such serve not our Lord Yeshua Mashiach, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. For your obedience is come abroad unto all men. I am glad therefore on your behalf, but yet I would have you wise uh, I, but I, yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. What is God's people? They let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity, and Jehovah knoweth them that are his. In Isaiah chapter 7, 
verse Verse 22, it says, And it shall come to pass, for the abundance of milk that shall be that they shall give, he shall eat butter, for butter and honey shall everyone eat. What, what's the butter and honey for? Back to Romans chapter 16. It says in verse 19, For your obedience is come abroad unto all men, I am glad, therefore, on your behalf, but yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. And the God of peace shall bruise or crush Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Yeshua Mashiach be with you. Amen.